Greetings! Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Saturday, October 23, 2021. For today's editorial, Philippines must review import restrictions on environmental goods. In a recent report, the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific or UNSCAP has tagged the Philippines as having imposed the most number of NTMS or non-tariff measures on environmental goods in 2019, which was reported by some local media last week. While a careful reading of the report in question shows that the situation is not as alarming as the news or stories about it suggested, it does raise concerns that there are some unnecessary and perhaps unintended restrictions that should be reviewed. The Asia-Pacific Trade and Investment Report on APTIA 2021, published by UNSCAP, focused on flows of environmental goods among the 53 member countries of the Commission using 2019 data. The Philippines plays a minuscule role in this trade, accounting for only 2% of the total imports and virtually no exports. The list of what qualifies as environmental goods is quite large. The Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APIC Forum, for example, endorses 54 Harmonized System or HS codes as classifications for environmental goods each one of which can apply to dozens or even hundreds of individual items. In general, environmental goods with respect to trade are those intended for sustainable purposes, such as recycled or renewable organic materials for construction or manufacturing, components of renewable or low-carbon energy systems, pollution control or waste processing equipment, and many others. Non-tariff measures that are applied to environmental goods, as described by the UNSCAP report, include non-automatic licensing in this, additional permit requirements, quotas, prohibitions, quantity control measures, and price control measures, including additional non-tariff taxes and charges. Compared with the rest of the regional group, the Philippines has among the lowest tariffs on environmental goods, averaging less than 4%. This is considerably below the regional average of 5.78%, as well as being below the APEC goal of 5% or less. However, the Philippines is by far the most heavy-handed when it comes to the application of NTMS, with imports of environmental goods subject to more than 4 NTMS on average, three times the regional average of 1.18. As the Aptier points out, most of these obstacles are probably unintentional, the result of environmental goods being caught up in broader measures applied to many types of imports rather than being specifically targeted. The effect, however, is the same. Imports of environmental goods face higher costs and more red tape to no obvious benefit. Positive momentum in the past few years, the Philippines has made significant strides in adopting policies that promote environmental sustainability. Some steps have been taken to encourage the development of renewable energy. A significant amount of effort has been applied to environmental rehabilitation in areas around the country and even in smaller less noticeable initiatives such as the government-wide mandate of basic energy and water conservation measures have also had a positive impact. The positive momentum established by these policies has also led to greater public awareness and demand for sustainable solutions, and this in turn has created new opportunities for economic growth, something that everyone would agree is vital as the country works toward recovering from the nearly two-year-old coronavirus pandemic. NTMS, even if they originally applied for a reasonable purpose and not intended to adversely affect environmental goods, simply serve as unnecessary breaks on this momentum. UNSCAP recommends that environmental goods be given the same treatment as some essential goods during the COVID-19 pandemic that is exempted from most tariffs and given fast-track import processing to avoid NTMS that are not absolutely vital to public health safety or security. This is a good start, but is an implicitly temporary solution. What would it provide, however? 
It's time for the government to review and better coordinate trade policy and customs procedure with environmental and energy policy. Anything that encourages investments in the expansion of renewable energy, sustainable infrastructure and conservation will reap benefits for the country far into the future and should be prioritized. And that's the editorial for Saturday, October 23, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and listen to the Voice of the Times.